All right, guys, so we're back into the bus and we're working on the Subaru swap again. Today, we're focusing back on the radiator. I know in the last video, we ended with the fuel pump and I've kind of changed my mind on that a bit or I'm in the thinking process. So we're leaving that sit for a bit. I may go to an in-tank pump instead of the inline fuel pump that we have now. I didn't really like where it was mounting. I didn't really, well, I'm not a big fan, I guess, of inline. And in-tank seems like a better way to go. I know there's nice universal kits out there. I had an old friend pass by. He kind of pushed me in this direction. And he also suggested uh, upgrading to a bay window tank which adds about five gallons capacity. Um, so from 10 to 15. Again, I really like that idea. So fuel systems on hold. I'm doing some research, I'm thinking about it, but we're jumping back to the radiator. So to talk a bit about the radiator and how it works, obviously this one has a scoop and we are gonna force cold air as we drive into the scoop, up through the radiator, you're gonna have fans on the top. They're gonna to be pulling fans, so pull that air through, and then it's gonna discharge. So it's gonna, obviously some will come out the side, but out the back here, it's quite open. I don't know if Sean can follow around, but quite open at the back here, and then that hot air will go and blow away. So that's how we're gonna work. Now, we wanna capture as much air at the front as possible. So, we did the 21 window conversion. Lots of videos on that if you're interested, but we ordered the belly pans with it. We never installed the center one. Now the center one is going to be mounted. We're gonna come up and we're gonna tuck it in nicely here so that we're not losing air or causing like pressure above the radiator. We're gonna seal all this off. So any air coming into this area is forced through the scoop to help with cooling. So we're gonna cut this, get it mounted up. It's gonna to have to be removable. So we're gonna use rib nuts. We're probably gonna to have to add tabs on the side to make it fit, but we're gonna go ahead and start to fabricating that now. All right, so measuring right back, we're at 23 and a half. If I look at our pan, I was gonna tape a line across, but if I cut right along the seam, I'm at 24. So that will be our first rough cut. We'll cut it at 24. We'll hold it up. And because I'm gonna bend it a bit, that extra half inch might be good. So uh, yeah, let's get our gear and uh, cut her up. So with the panel cut at 24, you can see we need it to go back. It needs to go back. It feels like about an inch up front here, but it's obviously hitting my scoop. I think the best thing to do here is just draw a line, cut a slot about an inch. And I'm gonna clamp this up, get a measurement so I don't cut it too far. And then that way, we'll know exactly how long to make our cut. And it will help hold the uh, help hold it in place. But this is where I mentioned the tab. So in the front here will be easy with rib nuts, right? So I can put whatever, three across if I want. But here I'm gonna have to, like this is such a narrow lip. <clears throat> I'm going to weld, out. I'm gonna weld the tab on that comes over and then put a rib nut up through here to hold it in place. But you get the idea from this shot that any air coming under the bus now is 
going to be forced right into that scoop. And it gives you a good idea of the clearance. So looking at the tape, an inch and three quarters is the lowest point there. So come on guys, it's not that bad. Inch and three quarters, I can live with that. So I'm quite happy with how this is turning out. Let's get a Sharpie, mark our slots and uh, slide this back into place. So taking measurements we're getting, I'm getting about three quarter along here. But this bend isn't the sharpest. I want that to be a nice fit. So I'm gonna start with a half inch and then we'll, we'll refit it again. But while uh, the camera was off and I was looking at this and, and well, liking how it's coming along, the rib nuts, what we were thinking is there's, there's a decent gap here. My finger's in the way, but there's a decent gap between the rad and that. And this aluminum is part of the radiator. If I could, once I slide this back, if I can get a rib nut right there instead of welding on these tabs and stuff, it'd be a much cleaner looking install. So I'm hopeful that that's what we can do, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to try after we get these slots cut in and uh, see how it happens. But I'm really hopeful that that's how it will end up. All right, so we cut in our two slits right now. They're very minimal, half inch. They should fit, but I'm gonna try to slide. Oh. Struggling a wee bit. There we go. So that was the half inch. We got a bit of a bend right here. Um, that looks pretty good. I think uh, if I sharpen this edge, do I have enough? So what I'm gonna do, use my head. Gonna mark where this goes to see if we can do the rib nut down here, because that will save me well, save some fabrication. We're welding tabs on, and I think in the end it's it's a much cleaner install. And then I might even put a foam gasket that that pushes up against. So my next step, I'm going to mark out and drill uh, some holes in this too to get some rib nuts so that I can start bolting this in place. All right, so I have decided I am going to do the rib nuts. I really like that, but I don't like that I'm as close to the weld. Um, I'm showing zooming in. Uh, close to the weld. Not that I'm worried about structural integrity because this... All it's really doing is holding this scoop and that piece of aluminum is welded up the whole side and it's it's just a casing for the radiator. So like, I'm not really that worried about it, but I would like to be a little further away from the weld just because. So what I've decided to do is because I won't be sealing this lip anyway. So that lip was gonna be at the front, right? It's going to catch like this. So I'm going to bang that flat. It'll be underneath. It's going to give me like another half inch. I'll make my slots a little longer. Push my rib nuts back a wee bit. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. And like, like I said, I'm never going to seal that because I want this to be removable. So yeah, go ahead, flatten this edge increase my slots by like half inch and then uh, retest fit. So we 
we frat flattened out the front lip. We extended our slots, so now they're an inch long, giving us more meat for our red nuts on the back side. And there you go. So it's nice and flush across the front here. And clean that up a little nicer. And it gives us much more meat inside. So again, I'm gonna mark that. Cause I'm gonna have to take off the scoop to uh, drill out those rib nuts and get the rib nut tool in there. And I'd like to drill that all at once. So what we'll do is we'll get the front rib nuts in, bolt that in, have some clamps holding it here, but take the scoop off for that. And then uh, rev nut that in. And then this is ready to be painted and undercoated. And we're getting closer. All right, so we marked it. We're gonna go with three holes, obviously one in the center. We came in two inches from each end. And we're going back about three quarter uh, just based on the thickness of our brace. So what I'm doing with my scribe, banging a center punch hole so my drill does not wander and then after that we're going to drill the three holes we're going to drill through both at the same time remove this put the rib nuts and then bolt it up so let's drill some holes All right, so with the pan or belly pan removed, we're gonna put our rib nuts in. I think I've talked about this tool before. There's lots of videos on YouTube about it. This is just a cheapie off Amazon, but um, I have to admit I, I like it. I like using it. Awesome for putting threaded inserts in. You saw how easy that was. Just thread it on. Put it in the hole. That one's hitting the tray. We're going to have to cut that out. It's hitting my heater tube, but because we are putting, well, we're putting heat into this bus, uh, this is in the way and going to be removed all the way up to the front elbow. I can't do that until I get my steering rack, my creative engineering uh, half rack kit, if you want to call it that, but steering rack out of the way so that um, we can cut and remove that. We're going to be hooking a hose back up to this 90 here. And my heater core is going to be tucked up here nicely. It's, it's really hard to see and I'm kind of getting off topic, but that will be another video. We'll be showing you adding heat that actually isn't just under the back seat. A lot of guys with the Subaru swaps throw it under the back seat. Canadian, live in Canada in the fall. I don't want my passengers in the back seat to have hot toes. I want to have warm hands and face in the front. So much nicer setup. Um, yeah, so we'll show you that in another video. So back to this the middle one hits the heater tube so for now actually I think I'm just gonna drill out that tube so I can put the rib nut in and finish what we're trying to achieve here today so we're skipping it around a little bit here moving forward so the video is not three hours long but we got the front three in I'm ready to drill the back two obviously my radiator is here a little concerned about that so I got a little piece of steel I'm gonna hold that there while I drill so if all of a sudden my drill goes through well I don't screw up my radiator or catch a coil I know uh, if I just ding the edge there I'm not wrecking my radiator but I don't want to ding the edge there so anyhow this is what we're going to do um, so I'm going to drill those now
All right, so we got the rib nuts in the radiator. You can see them here. We've got the three across the front. Uh, we're ready to put it all together and then uh, do some cleanup and paint. So go ahead, put the scoop back on first and then we'll bolt our removable belly pan on. Scoop's installed, it's bolted on. To be honest, I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Uh, I think it's gonna look pretty slick. It looks nice and clean. I like that our cut was right on the line and we weren't going through any of uh, the indentations here. Um, yeah, look good. I did get to making these other two hatches. You saw us make this, same thing. I'm gonna cut squares, use rib nuts. I don't need to post any more of that. So we'll call it a night. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you out there.